You never know quite exactly when to say. Yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is a plant-based registered dietitian named Addie Delaney Minerich, and she is the daughter of a plant-based cardiologist who's been on the show before named Dr. Jamie Delaney. All right. Oh, good. We're live. I never know. I so apologize for the pause, but it's just sometimes oh, yeah. it doesn't look like I'm live. So that would be terrible. Anyway, Absolutely. she is here to tell her story about being plant-based and being a plant-based dietitian, but she's also going to make a wonderful recipe, a rainbow burrito bowl, and talk a little bit about a balanced plate. Please welcome Addie to the show. It's nice to see you again. It's been a while. It was at the Veg Fest in Florida, I believe, that we met. Yes, good to see you too. And hello, everyone. Yes, it was a few years ago. Yeah, pre-COVID when the Veg Fest were thriving. So hopefully we can get back to that. But uh, yes, coming to you from Houston today. So yes. Thank that's, you for having me. So cool. So your mom has been on the show before. She's also been a guest on one of my summits and, and she's yeah. also a wonderful cook and she's also plant-based uh, and her name is Jamie Delaney and you work with her. Yes. Yes, I do. So I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and at the timing of my mom, Dr. Jamie Delaney converting her practice, it kind of lined up uh, exactly perfect with me coming out of school. And I had the opportunity to work with my mom, which has always been a dream. Um, I kind of tinkered with the idea of, you know, med school or different areas of health uh, professions growing up, wanting to help people like my mom, found dietetics, and I can get into that as well. But it just, again, timing lined up beautifully. And I'm able to work with my mom remotely here in Houston and as her dietitian and nutrition and wellness coordinator with our practice. That is so cool. So I'm curious, you went to dietetic school. Were you plant-based at the time or did you become plant-based afterwards? Uh, so going into college, kind of had the idea, um, potentially med school, something in health field, but we were not plant-based as a family. Um, my freshman year, uh, my grandmother, Dr. Delaney's mom was diagnosed with lymphoma and that's when the whole family made this switch. So Dr. Delaney had been kind of applying it in her life, my mom, uh, and then we all made this switch. I had struggled with, um, you know, we have a long uh, family history of diabetes, heart disease, and I gained some college weight, always had body image issues. And I, I put on the, the typical weight in college and I was starting to even feel the effects hormonally as well as even maybe some pre-diabetes issues. And so when we made this switch, I started to see some improvements. And then I decided to transfer to my mom's alma mater, WVU. West Virginia University, go Mountaineers. And I walked onto the rowing team and I had the idea of going to PT school. They have an excellent ex -phys program. And that is what my first degree is in exercise physiology. Uh, but on the rowing team, I had no idea what a dietitian was, and but we had to work with our sports dietitian. And so I was introduced at the same time as transforming my own health just by, you know, going vegan, but more junk food vegan, I would say, um, you know, typical college kid cooking skills I, um, and, and lack thereof. So uh, more junk food vegan, sold some oil and salt in there, but no animal products. And, but we started working with a dietitian and it was the first time in my life that I didn't see food as restrictive or as calories and really developed a healthier relationship with food and saw it as how can it affect my athletic performance? How can it affect my health and what types of foods to build? And she wasn't plant-based, but being able to apply what she was telling me with the you know education I was getting on the side uh, was really helpful with my college athletic uh, health and career, but then also personally, and that I've been able to carry into my life. And I decided, you know, hey, upon graduating, uh, I think, you know, a lot of our courses blend together. I think I want to, if I, if it's okay, I want to go back and add nutrition to this. So I went and received my human nutrition and foods degree as my second bachelor's from WVU, went on to complete my dietetic internship, got my license. And uh, we've been in Atlanta since now in Houston, I'm licensed in uh, Texas and Florida and the rest is history. So <laughs> kind of all blended together. That's great. Was it, what, what's it like going to dietetic school when you're plant-based? Is, is, is it something they even teach or do they just respect it, but not really are that interested in teaching it? Yeah. Um, you're, you're on a very tiny Island. 
<laughs> and, and some schools may be different. Um, I definitely think when it's a public university, and unfortunately, you have a lot of that government funding coming in, uh, depending on, you know, what kind of education is being pushed. I do think that has an effect on things. Uh, but it, unfortunately, nutrition in schools, you know, we talk about wanting physicians to be uh, more educated in nutrition, but our dietitians really the the education is uh, not current as it could be. And, you know, nutrition is ever evolving, but it just seems like for whatever reason, our education is back in the time. So uh, the only thing talked about was, you know, vegan and vegetarians, you can be careful that they're not anemic and they're not low protein and, you know, that they're not underweight, not getting enough nutrients. Meanwhile, uh, I never had that issue as a collegiate athlete. I actually had some peers who were big dairy meat eaters who had anemia issues. And I, you know, I recovered much faster. So I knew what I was doing, you know, the proof was in the pudding on that end of things, but then going through school, um, you know, high research university, I had a lot of pushback, uh, you know, our nutrition department was within the ag science, uh, school as well. So that, that got a little sticky there, but, um, it was, uh, some professors were uh, supportive, interested, uh, but I did get some pushback. So you kind of, you know, any advice I can give to young dietitian potentials out there is do your own studying on the side. You know, you kind of have to go with the flow while you're in school a little bit, which is very hard. Um, I come from a not so quiet group of women. <laughs> so it's hard to kind of keep your mouth shut and mind your P's and Q's just to get through it. But uh, as long as you're doing your research on the side, you can still get a great education foundationally, um, but pursue your passion and the truth, which is plant-based nutrition. Right. So it, it was a little sticky though. <laughs> That's fantastic. Are there organizations now for dietitians that are plant-based or you guys can learn and support from each other? Um, there are different, um, especially if you are... Um, I'm sure meetup like meetups online are a great way to navigate. If you go to different cities to try to find meetup groups um, and searching within your area for other dietitians, there's not a large governing body, unfortunately. Um, so our, our big yearly conference is fancy and uh, there is not a lot there in terms of whole food plant-based support typically unfortunately. Um, so I really have never um, chosen to go looking at presenters and expos and things like that. I typically go to more plant-based focused um, medical nutrition conferences um, like that uh, put on by Dr. Barnard in DC. We have gone to that several times. So kind of having to navigate your own way outside of the norm is really my biggest, uh, my biggest push there. Well, maybe you could start a governing body for plant-based dietitians. Who knows, you know, maybe, maybe that'll be the next step. <laughs> so, so cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so, so talk about the balance plate. And I, I assume the recipe you're making is part of what you teach as far as a balance plate. It is. So, uh, you know, I was thinking of what to make when um, you asked me to come on and, you know, there, there are a lot of elaborate recipes out there that we can do, but I, you know, having a, a, young baby in the home, we have really reverted to what can we do simple, but nutrient dense in our home, because that's a non-negotiable for me as our nutrition and our health. So uh, with balanced plate building, this is kind of, if you have a first call with me, with our practice. So I uh, speak to our members via zoom or telehealth monthly, um, if not more, but that first initial call, I go over what is balanced plant-based nutrition? Cause there's so much uh, confusing uh, whether it's supplements or even whole foods, you know, what do we do? No oil, no this, no that. And so looking at the different types of foods within plant-based uh, nutrition and how to make sure that we're getting your iron, your fiber, your color, your protein, your healthy, you know, complex carbohydrates and things like that. Um, so I thought I'm going to do a family friendly, someone who's low on time, delicious recipe. And we just had Cinco de Mayo yesterday. So I was like, Let's do a rainbow burrito bowl, which is something that we have in our house almost every single Tuesday. Instead of like a taco Tuesday, we do this. It's quick, it's easy, and it's got lots of color. So the parts to our plate that I like to talk about are um, I'll be doing, I'm just going to throw my water in here. Um, I'm just doing a rice today. I'm doing a uh, white jasmine rice, but you can do any type of whole grain. 
that you're choosing um, to do for this. Um, for this recipe or, or omit, you could substitute even um, a potato for this. So looking at the plate we have, when I introduce the types of foods, we have our colorful fruits and vegetables. We have our nitric oxide producing dark leafy greens. And those are our foods that are super high nutrient density, very high fiber, lots of color. They're adding the rainbow to our meals, but not um, high caloric density. So those are foods I set more minimums on to make sure that we get enough of. So color wise, I give people the goal, can you do three or more colors in a meal, which we're gonna be doing with some beautiful purple cabbage, red onion, and colorful bell peppers, as well as topping with some tomatoes and cilantro and lime and things like that. And then I'll be, as my base to my burrito bowl, I'll be doing some great nitric oxide producing that dilation effect producing leafy greens of just some basic baby spinach and some arugula. So I'll be having that as my base. And that way I know that we're getting in a lot of leafy greens at dinner, but then sometimes we'll do this meal for lunches. So it's a great way to have your base for your meals as your greens. I'll top it with some, some rice as I'll plate it later when we're finished today. And then we'll do um, some great beans. So the plant-based protein source, we know we get a little bit from everything, but you know, beans are beautiful, not just for protein though, but for iron and fiber, B vitamins, um, have some calcium in there too. So we'll be doing a mixture of black and pinto beans today. I've already washed those and rinsed them well um, for that more concentrated plant-based protein source. And then um, top it with our, our sauteed veggies that we're going to do. And then a few fresh and gar ingredient garnishes. So but even though beans are very high in protein, I mean, we really don't have to worry about getting enough no. protein. Most of us do we on a plant based no. diet? No, absolutely not. So if you're eating a nice wide variety of whole foods um, and and getting in, you know, some whole grains even and other vegetables, you know, everything has a little bit in it. You know, we we got it right the first time with the whole food, so you don't have to be concerned. And that's usually the first thing that someone fears is, you know, where am I going to get my protein? Or I'll hear stories of, oh, I tried this before, but I felt so tired and sluggish. And I just, I didn't work for me. And I'm like, well, usually that's not going to be a protein issue. It's, you know, if you're doing this the right way, we're eating whole foods. Again, most of the foods like in this meal are low caloric density. You just have to eat a higher volume and then you're getting more fiber and more micronutrients as well. So as long as you're keeping up with that and your caloric needs for an ideal body weight, um, and you're adding in these foods, uh, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Not at all. Absolutely. Great. Thanks. Yes. So I'm going to get to dicing up my veggies, if you do not mind. And so some red onion, again, if any kind of pigments that we can add. So Breakfast, I love for people, you know, fruits, if we always, if we can, and even throughout the day, but vegetables too. You know, we think of color and I think a lot of times people think fruit, um, which is fabulous. Do not fear the fruit, but vegetables can provide so many antioxidants as well. And it's very, very simple. It's just by adding color to your meals. So these purple pigments within the red onion, and then this red cabbage are fabulous for adding that in as well as what I'm going to be getting from my bell peppers. And you could totally do this raw too. You do not have to even cook all of this, but I'm going to kind of, you know, I, I typically choose typical fajita veggies. Um, so you like your peppers and onions, and then I'm going to throw in this purple cabbage for a really nice crunch. But again, um, for again, the more color we're looking for. And I just slice it real thin. And then we're going to just stick it all just with a little water and saute it until it is soft. Yes. You, you and your mom wrote a book, right? We did. So we have a uh, plant-based wellness cookbook that you can get on Amazon. Um, it's the three generations of cooking with uh, the Delaney's. So if you choose, um, you can be found on Amazon, Kindle or um, hard copy. And it is not just a book of recipes. It's literally what we do at home uh, with our families, but it's almost a textbook for what we do in our cooking classes. So as part of the practice, we do two new 
nutrition classes a week within the home based office with Dr. Delaney. So I write the recipes, set up the, the streaming service, and then we do those. So Mondays, we stream via Zoom for our out of town members. We have a membership practice that reaches not just Florida, where our home based practice is, but we have people in California, Michigan, New York, Ohio, all over. So on Monday mornings, those folks can stream in and we do our Zoom classes, but they're always recorded in case folks are working and can't get to those. And then Fridays, we have our in-house classes that we do with folks who are more local. Yeah. And so we use a lot of the recipes that are in the cookbook and then developing more as we go. So do, do people have to have cardiology problems to, to work with you and go through your mom's practice first, or do you just take on clients maybe for other reasons? Absolutely other reasons as well. So, uh, you know, my mom's been in private practice since I was uh, seven. So I always got to see her in action as a cardiologist. But when we expanded um, to a membership-based practice, decided we're going to go, you know, full force plant-based team here um, to change the world's health, uh, we decided to expand. And so she can also offer primary care services. But we offer, you know, a lot of folks, come to us for reversal, I would say, uh, you know, of those chronic lifestyle conditions. Uh, but we're getting more and more people, families, and even young people um, who are looking to prevent. But also, you know, how do you do this and be an athlete? So we have a lot of folks, you know, my mom has done uh, several Ironman marathons and now ultra races. I've after college got into the endurance scene as well with marathons and ultra trail runs. Um, and so we have a big passion for endurance athletics. And so we'll have people come and we'll help train them plant-based for uh, whether it be a 5k or a 10k or an ultra. So whatever they'd like to do, or even a triathlon, um, and we'll combine, you know, exercise um, help, but also the nutrition side, which is usually lacking within that population, you know, that's really focused on exercise and people think they can out exercise a poor diet, you know, but really it's going to catch up to you eventually, unfortunately, and you can enhance your recovery time as well as your athletic performance this way. So we, we, we love a wide variety of people in our practice, whether it be families, athletes, or older individuals looking to uh, reverse um, some chronic lifestyle disease. Your book is called The Doctor, The Dietitian, and The Diva. So since we know you're the dietitian and we know that your mom's the doctor, why don't you tell us a little bit about who the diva is? I would love to tell you about the diva and especially because the diva's birthday, she is going to be 88 years young next week. And she is our inspiration for everything. She has never lived her age. And that is what we push for our practice members as well. Um, so that's my nunny. I call her endearingly. Um, Nona in Italian is grandma. But when I was little, I, I put my own twist on it and called her nunny and it just stuck. Um, but she is Dr. Delaney's mom. She is present at all of our in-house nutrition classes. And she is a lymphoma survivor who inspired the entire family to go plant-based. Um, Italian, very amazing cook. Uh, and we have converted all our recipes and a lot of her soup recipes, she's an excellent cook, um, are in the cookbook that we made um, plant-based or ones that she's just good at creating things. Um, something out of nothing, she'll say. So uh, that, that is the diva and she is part of our in-house yoga classes at the office. She does Zumba on Tuesday. She's golfing twice a week and beating everyone. So uh, yes, she is living proof that this can uh, make you age well. Well, when can I meet her and get her on Chef AJ Live? She sounds like a great interview. Oh my gosh, she would be fabulous. We're going to have to figure that one out. <laughs> she is a hoot. I always say she's, she's 88 going on 21. She's feisty, but that's what keeps us young. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I'm doing, um, like I said, my color, I'm doing some uh, bell peppers and then my cabbage and onion. But then I always tell our members white does count. So if you do a white onion, but then also mushrooms. So mushrooms we know have a great um, anti-cancer benefit. They also can be a great source of vitamin D and they offer really great flavor. So I threw some mushrooms in this as well. And you can use any kind you like in the recipe. 
Um, I have the baby Bellas, but you can do any kind that you like. And then for our seasonings for this dish, I love smoked paprika. I like, well, I'm gonna do, you know, typical taco type seasonings, cumin, chili powder, um, black pepper to taste. And then I, um, if you wanna really uh, turn the heat up, a little chipotle pepper will do it. If you wanna do a low, little splash of um, low sodium tamari, you can. If we're watching sodium, a fun tip is turn up the heat a little. So a little spice is really great for uh, when we're removing, especially table salt for someone's diet to give them that flavor and help them transition to using less and less salt. So take these over here and just, I have recommendations on there uh, for our recipe, but I kind of go to taste depending on how much I'm, uh, how much of the vegetables I'm cooking as well, but I'm going to do a little chili powder, like I said, a little smoked paprika, always some cumin, and then some chipotle powder. Is your whole family plant-based? I know you said you have a, a new baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Little Caleb, he will be, um, this is his birthday month as well as mine. So we have a lot of birthdays in our family in May. He'll be a year old at the end of the month. Um, and then I have my husband and we are all whole food plant-based. Um, so, uh, it, it is a family affair. I was, you know, very blessed and fortunate. I had a very healthy pregnancy. Um, I think I was under strong scrutiny from all the OBs in the practice that I was in, like what, what's going to happen to her. Right. Uh, but I, I was able to um, carry over full term. He did not want to come out healthy baby boy, be active throughout uh, my pregnancy and then be able to um, continue to nurse him as well. So uh, doing this plant-based been very, very fortunate. So yes, but we're, we're all plant-based and he's eating whole foods now, his favorite I would say is um, he loves sweet potatoes, but he loves tofu, um, avocado, raspberries, watermelon. Those are his absolute favorites. So it's, it's been fun to now as a, you know, a food nerd here, a dietitian to start to do food with him. It's been a lot of fun. What about vegetables? Vegetables. He loves, we're doing some zucchini. Um, I do a lot of uh, the more of the whole vegetables. So leafy greens without teeth is a little difficult. So those we have to blend, but those are more of the picking up foods he likes. Um, but we'll do um, carrots, zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower. He loves those as well. Um, and then we'll do more purees. He likes butternut squash um, and things like that. So absolutely getting a, getting a variety in. <laughs> Yeah, never, never thought about leafy greens and teeth. You're right. You got to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do um, a pesto sauce for his pasta with white beans and basil and garlic and a ton of spinach. And that's one way to get it in or blend it in a puree if I do a puree. But we're starting to get to more whole food. So I'll make him little veggie bites um, instead of like the nuggets you get at the store. I'll blend some food together with um, some beans, pack them into little nuggets and bake those. And it's been working really well. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yes. So these are our veggies. And then, like I said, we, we're going to do some beans here as well. Um, so for our beans, again, if you're doing cans and you rinse them well, uh, you don't have to cook them. They're already cooked. And I always like to say, you know, we're going to do low sodium organic. If we're doing canned, if you want to do dry, that's wonderful as well. But sometimes time slips or we have an inspiration and we want it that night. So canned is great and easy cheating seasoning. I'm just going to do a little salsa, some smoked paprika and cumin and heat them up on the stove. So this is our, I need something quick kind of night. And it's delicious and makes a ton. And we'll usually have some for lunches the next day. You and your husband are both pretty athletic, aren't you? Yes, we would like to think so. We try. <laughs> so we met at West Virginia uh, University. He was on the football team and I was on the rowing team. So we started off that way. Um, and now he is a collegiate strength coach with the football team here at the University of Houston. And he, after football, has 
continued to, um, he has a passion for powerlifting. So I'm kind of the cardio nut uh, between the two of us. <laughs> um, and he is more into the powerlifting side. And he was not plant-based when we met. Um, very typical Midwest meat and potatoes kind of guy. Um, very intelligent and very someone who, uh, you know, a little stubborn I am as well. So I can say that, but someone who wanted to find out on his own, okay, what's this like? I'm not just going to do this because you say you should do this. And so he, um, during his, you have, they have to go through a graduate assistantship before they become a full-time coach, um, had put on some weight after football, typical things that happens to, unfortunately, those players. And he's like, well, I'm just going to give this a try and I'm going to see what happens. Uh, to my strength goals. And he is stronger now, leaner now than he has ever been. And even was in college, um, working out, you know, high level college athletics and, um, you know, normalized BMI blood work is beautiful. Um, and, and he's, you know, has a squat now over 500 pounds, um, and full-time strength coach feeling great. So, I mean, he, uh, the proof is in the pudding. And I just said, you know, you can bring whatever you want in the house, but I'm not going to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he figured it out and we love it. And he eats this way a hundred percent. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He did his own experiment on himself. He like tracked his blood work. He tracked his, um, you know, strength progress, his weight. And he's like, you know, I can do this. And now we're just, you know, nuts over it. We just love it. So I love that you said you can bring it in, you, you know, you can get it, but I'm not going to cook it. So many people yeah. struggle with still cooking. It is hard. Food. It's got to be hard because they know it's not healthy and they still cook it for their family. Yes, it, it is hard, you know, and especially, you know, when folks, I, I have a lot of members who are retired. So it's just, you know, the two of them at home, kids are gone. Uh, and you know, am I going to have to cook two meals now? And it, it's, it's struggles. And when you have that support, it, it is life changing. Um, when I have people who, you know, everybody in the family gets on board, it just makes it so much more seamless. Um, you know, so I, I hands off to people or hats off rather to people who have to do it alone. Um, and there has to be the, you know, the guilt side of it too. You know, that what they're doing isn't good for them. Um, but you kind of just, I tell people the biggest thing to get people to want to eat this way is to, you know, do it well, get healthy. And then people want to know what you're doing. You know, if we push things on folks, oftentimes it's just not going to work. But if you're living proof of this lifestyle, then he's not going to want that. You know, you make the food delicious and colorful. Absolutely. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Some people are stuck so far deep in the pleasure trap. They don't have an interest. Absolutely. I refer that book quite often. It is quite eye-opening. So absolutely. Well, as soon as my uh, pressure releases here, I think we're ready to plate. So I see you use the Instant Pot, one of my favorite appliances. Do you have any other kitchen tools you love? Maybe like an air fryer or other things? Um, I do not use an air fryer. Uh, I, I watch with, you know, um, excess cooking temperatures and it just kind of doesn't fit in our kitchen <laughs> for the most part, but I, you have a Vitamix. I have a very, I use that quite often. Um, a very simple food processor, you know, for when you don't want to get in there and have to dig out of your Vitamix. Um, and then really, uh, my, my instant pot, I would say is probably one of the most used things, uh, that we, we have. Absolutely. Soups, grains, beans. It, it is, a wonder, uh, yogurt. We just did, uh, a fermentation, uh, zoom conference. We have started doing those, uh, post COVID to get more reach and have people more comfortable seeing, uh, different conferences and things. So we have been doing those every few months. Um, and so, uh, we'll be releasing the date for one we're going to be doing this summer in June for summer foods. We just did a fermentation one and the soy instant pot yogurt. It is awesome. And you get more probiotic benefit from it. It's easy. You can kind of create a little culture and just keep it like a, a starter. And that was a big hit, but we use it. Oh my goodness. Almost every night, I would say. That's great. What do you, what, uh, what do you eat every day? Do you have a routine, like a certain breakfast, a certain lunch, certain types of meals for dinner? Absolutely. So, um, we, uh, during the week, pretty similar day to day for breakfast, oatmeal, 
um, some fruit and I do some, some chia seeds with that, but a variety of fruit, usually always some pear- berries in the morning, something quick and easy. Um, Caleb does that as well. Um, and so we keep it Monday through Friday, very routine, something I know that's going to be high fiber nutrient dense to get me through the morning. And then on the weekends, I might mix it up a little bit. So in our cookbook, we have um, a tofu scramble, which I'll do sometimes we want something a little more savory, uh, but I've also done that for dinners. Uh, but then we'll do, we have a few great uh, pancake recipes. So we'll do a pancake and then a nice big bowl of colorful fruit with that um, on the weekends. Lunches, if not leftovers, are really nice big salads with our leafy greens. I love sweet potatoes. Um, so we'll do some sweet potatoes, some beans, if, uh, you know, some fresh salsa, maybe some bell peppers or other vegetables um, chopped up, maybe some different types of greens, so spinach, arugula, kale, things like that. Um, and then some fruit as well on the side. I like a little something sweet afterwards. So I always like to finish it off with some fruit. And then dinners, anything from, like I said, we'll do this once a week. We'll probably do um, like a stir fry one, one evening. I'm really into bowls, like Buddha bowls types of things to get some a variety of vegetables in um, and roasting and things like that. Um, occasionally we'll do um, a pasta night. Maybe we'll do a pizza night so every once in a while, kind of rotate more labor intensive meals, depending on what the weeks look like, um, a soup, things like that. Um, but yeah, we keep it quite simple because yeah, I'm just looking and I literally just mentioned everything. I have a little menu that I I write out our meals for the week, which is something I can't recommend enough to plan ahead of time and grocery shop accordingly. Um, but that's basically everything on our, on our list right there. Wow. That's great. I wonder when oatmeal and fruit became such a popular breakfast in the plant-based world. Cause that seems to be the answer I get from almost everybody. I, yeah, I, I would love to know when to, um, but it's great. You know, oats are wonderful sources of iron and beautiful fiber. Um, so they're, they're great to help with that satiety factor as well as leveling off blood glucose in the morning, delaying that gastric emptying, keeping you nice and full. Um, and so it's just kind of a great way you can prep them overnight, which is what we do. You know, Nathan leaves at four o'clock in the morning. So his gets prepped overnight and we make ours in the morning when, when we eat. And uh, it's just kind of an easy, easy go-to that we'll do. And sometimes I'll just do a little bit, you know, so the chia seeds and then a few dabs of oat and then um, a lot of fruit, just depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, But yeah, no, they're just, uh, I guess a good go-to, but I wonder when as well. It'd be interesting. So you said your son, Caleb is going to turn one this year. Is that correct? Yes. End of the month. Yeah, Hard so, to believe. I, okay. So what, how do you feel about those smash cakes that people do for when your birthdays? <laughs> we will be having a cake, um, but it will be plant-based and he has not had um, any sugar of any kind. So I'll be making it. Um, I, that was my first love. I would say was baking. Uh, when I was growing up, you know, my mom and my nonny are fabulous cooks. I was the one who was the baker in the family, which is kind of after my namesake. I'm named after my great grandmother. And in our small, small town on the border of um, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, she was known for baking and she is in our cookbook um, as well with one of her recipes. Uh, But so that was my passion. So I'm excited to make him a, you know, plant-based, no refined sugar cake that, you know, he'll smash it up. That'll make it the smash cake, right? So we won't get into all the slobbery pieces. He can have that for himself, but I'll be making it. So I'm really excited about that. That's nice. Yeah. I mean, I always thought you could just, you could just do mashed potatoes. I don't think kids care about the sugar as much as they just like to. Yes. He loves feeling the textures and that's so good for kids. You know, I can't recommend that enough, you know, with picky eaters, having them, you know, everyone says, don't play with your food, but they're learning so much sensory wise that it can um, improve their interest and a variety of vegetables if you just let them feel like how you cook things differently. And so absolutely, that has to be the best part is just getting in there and getting messy. Does, does uh, the diva live near your mom? Yes. Yes, they live um, on in the same home, actually. So they live together. They have a little um, a granny suite on the back. Um, so we've always been very, very close, whether they're down the street or we all moved together when I was in high school. So yes, she is in Port Charlotte with my mom. That's great. Yes. Yeah, so they'll all be coming here. It'll be a big plant-based party at the end of May. So 
Absolutely. Release my pressure here. So one of the things I, I'm sure you know a lot about this being a dietitian, also just in general, being plant-based, people worry about B12. And the, I hear like, well, the, the plant-based diet, obviously it can't be good because you have to supplement with B12. We're finding out more and more that, I mean, even if you're eating meat, um, the animals aren't out, you know, for what most people are eating, so their um, animal sources are not eating grass and getting in the dirt and they're in these feedlots with horrible conditions. So they're actually not getting that B12 from the ground. And we're seeing more and more people who are B12 deficient, uh, you know, among other nutrients who aren't eating this way. So it's not that we're necessarily deficient um, and we do store a little bit of it, but it is something that I have people supplement with, um, but you can get it from some other sources as well, but a little supplement here and there, um, uh, just a sublingual tablet is what I usually have people do. Um, but I mean, if you use something like nutritional yeast, but then also some fermented foods have some more B12 and things like that, you know, you can get it from other sources and it's not never something I'm too awful worried about. Do you worry about it, whether it's methylcobalamin or cyano? Um, dependent on, you know, I, I usually have um, the, the methyl is typically what we'll, we'll do, but uh, depending on what um, they have access to, as well as what they tolerate um, amount wise as well as something that we'll, we'll kind of recommend for folks. But yeah, I mean, it's not like we have to have a lot of it. Um, it is, you know, what's obvious pushed. It's like, oh, it's just lacking. It's like, we, we just need a very small amount. And really the supplements are greater than what we even absorb, you know? Um, so, you know, it's not of a huge concern. Okay. So did you recommend taking it every day then just, cause I find if I don't take it every day, I don't remember what day I took it. Yeah. Yeah. So you, the B vitamins are water soluble. So what we don't need, we excrete. So it's very hard to, um, over consume a B12. So I, you know, I'm the same way. I'll just have someone take a little bit every day. I personally don't tolerate much more than 2000 micrograms. It makes me nauseous, which is what happens to some people. So I just take a thousand, um, most days that, you know, I'm remembering, uh, in the morning. And that seems to be just fine, especially if your levels are normal, um, because you, you don't want to push it too high either. So if you just take a small dose every day, you should be just fine. Okay. So you had a, a, a completely flawless plant-based pregnancy. And I'm curious if you had a plant-based doctor that supported you or just a regular doctor who wasn't plant-based, but that still supported you. Regular doctor who was not plant-based. Um, and <laughs> I think when they heard dietitian, they let me kind of lead the way on that a little bit more than if they hadn't, as well as like kind of shut down any advice on a uh, protein things that I would need quite quickly. Uh, but no one really uh, gave much pushback because I mean, I never had any, you know, the blood work they do throughout my, my iron levels were beautiful, which was their main concern. Um, I eat, you know, they know I'm a dietitian and they, they honestly wouldn't even touch the subject of what are you eating? Unfortunately, it was totally lacking. And that was a big frustration for me um, with prenatal nutrition, as well as postnatal. Um, you know, unless someone is referred to a dietitian, you're just talked about having enough calories coming in with some focus on, you know, folate and leafy greens. Uh, but, you know, eating enough when you're hungry. And that was really the end of the discussion, which was quite frustrating, especially when I'd be in the waiting room, you know, waiting on my blood glucose test with the others and hearing advice being given. And it was just like, oh, <laughs> we can do so much more preeclampsia is not needed, you know? Uh, so that was, the, that was frustrating, but thankfully, I think again, when I heard dietitian, they didn't push me too bad. Uh, but you know, I was able to keep it on the up and up. <laughs> right. Just cause so many people are not a registered dietitian. And I know that I've heard that their, their doctor, if, especially if not plant-based doesn't support a plant-based pregnancy. Yes. And I have a friend who was, um, she was not plant-based vegetarian and she was told, to that she needed to consume fish for those omega threes and maybe some eggs and things like that. Um, and kind of got her on a, on a track. And this was before I met her. Um, and then she started craving these foods. And then even after the baby was there, they were still around. So, um, helping her get off of those was something that I attributed to, but 
it's just, uh, there's not a lot of nutritional support out there, unfortunately. Um, and they're so worried, which I mean, your, your nutrition while you're carrying a child is very important, but, um, you know, you can do this if, if you're healthy before you have a baby and, and you're doing this the right way, there's no reason that you can't continue to be plant-based, um, throughout your pregnancy. Right. Did you gain a lot of weight? Um, I did not. I, I gained um, the appropriate amount. Um, and I have um, since lost it, thankfully. Um, so I'm back to my normal BMI. I'm very happy about that. Uh, and, and so no, I um, think about 30 pounds at the end because I went almost two weeks overdue. So I gained a lot of fluid at the very end. <laughs> um, but not too much. And I never experienced um, you know, the, the swollen feet and hands and ankles that everyone saying, Oh, just wait, it's coming. It's coming. I never, I never had that. My energy was fairly good. I mean, you get tired when you're pregnant. There's a lot going on, especially that third trimester. Um, and like I said, we went almost two weeks over. So I was, I was ready. <laughs> I was very ready, but no, and I was able to, a lot of that was, you know, fluid and baby that, uh, went away right away. And then I was able to slowly have it taper off, but not been restricted with my diet. You know, I've just been eating good whole foods that I don't have to guess the ingredients. I know what's in it and it's just come off naturally healthy. And I've been able to sustain a milk supply. And like I said, I'm very thankful. I'm back to my uh, pre baby weight and feeling great. So you didn't have to like diet to lose the, the 30 pounds you got from your pregnancy. No, it's crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> and, and how long did it take you to get back to that weight? Um, I hit pre baby weight by nine months, which is what I would tell most people, you know, it took you nine months to grow the baby and, and it shouldn't be your focus. You know, if you, um, you know, pregnancy is a beautiful thing and there's so much out there with, um, you know, body image, good and bad that if you focus on the good foods, you're only going to gain the appropriate amount of weight. Um, and you know, it's not going to go crazy and it will come off, you know, especially if you're nursing, your caloric expenditure is so much greater. Um, when, uh, after, you know, in your post baby days, so that helps and just being active as allowed after delivery. Um, but no, I never had a diet because, you know, if again, eating within my means. So uh, I, I would eat maybe a little bit more if I was hungry and I was way hungry nurse, hungrier nursing than I ever was pregnant. Um, so I would say, you know, just eating to match that hunger. But if you're eating whole foods, you're, you're good to go. And that's what you should be focused on because if, especially, especially if you're nursing, um, you know, whatever you're putting in is first going to your baby and then you're just getting the leftovers. So to make sure that your nutrition is sustainable as well as your milk supply, eating enough to uh, match your hunger, but by no means having to push excess amounts or supplements um, like protein powders and things like that um, are just not needed. Yeah. Did you have any unusual cravings while you were pregnant? I wanted everything my husband liked. So um, like more, uh, I would say savory foods, barbecue, like smoked paprika was, I was crazy about it. And um, a lot of Asian food, I really craved uh, like Thai foods and things like that. So way more savory, which I'm more of a sweets person, um, but I loved, I couldn't get enough of fresh fruits and then I don't do any type of um, juices or things like that. We just do water here for beverages and coffee. But uh, I really wanted lemonade and orange juice for whatever reason, second and third trimester. It was the craziest thing. Uh, but other than that, you know, it was pretty much anything Nathan wanted. This baby was definitely connected to him from the get go. <laughs> That's great. Yes. It's great to hear about such a healthy plant based pregnancy. Yes. Yes. It was I'm very grateful for that. Absolutely. Should I go ahead and plate? Absolutely. All right. So like I said before, I just have um, some fresh baby spinach and arugula. Arugula is fabulous this time of year. And it is one of my favorites. Again, for that nitric oxide benefit, I'm just going to take a little bit, about probably a half cup portion of this hot rice on these fresh greens. And then coming over here with my fajita veggies. So again, those mushrooms, onions, bell peppers, and you can do other types of peppers. 
Uh, so I have jalapeno, but then also poblano peppers and, you know, a big healthy portion of the colorful stuff, right? The good stuff. I always say don't skimp on the good stuff. And then I have my seasoned beans here. Let's put a little on top, in the middle. And I have some fresh cilantro that the Houston heat has not killed yet. I unfortunately lost my basil plant already. Summer is in full force here. Um, but so I have my cilantro, some chopped tomatoes. I'll do a little bit of avocado on top here in the middle and then top it with some lime. And if you wanna also hit it with a little bit of fresh salsa, you can do that too. And there you have it, a rainbow burrito bowl. So there you go, absolutely. Should I bring it forward more? Oh my God, that looks delicious. It is, it is. And it's like I said, we'll do this for lunches um, as well as dinners, but it is one of my favorite fast meals. If I didn't have someone so lovely to talk to, I could whip this up in 15 minutes, you know, 20 minutes, whatever. And you don't have to even cook it all. You can do all of this raw, just kind of gives you a different uh, feel. And then it's, you know, a great substitute, you know, sandwiches and wraps and things like that. Everyone always asks me about that. And there's not enough surface area there, right? For the good stuff. So if we're confined to a tortilla shell or a piece of bread, you're never gonna get enough of those colorful foods that we need. So doing a bowl like this, you get the same flavors you're looking for, um, but really can pack in the nutrients. I love it. I, and I love combining hot rice with cold salad. I just think it's delicious to combine hot and cold together. Yes, I do too. It's one of my faves. Yeah. And, and if there's leftover rice, the next day you could have it with cold rice. It's very versatile. Exactly. Exactly. Meal prepping made easy. <laughs> I know. I wish more people would stop chasing recipes and just learn to enjoy the food because the combinations are really endless. Yes. Yes. And that's really what I wanted to showcase today. It does not have to be complicated. You know, just a few seasonings if you want. But even if you don't, you just want to put these fresh foods together. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's going to love you back, get the food that loves you back. Um, Alina wants to know, do you work with people who live in California? Absolutely. So we have um, our membership that is local to Florida, but then we have two online membership programs. So online level one is just with me. So you work just with me as your dietitian um, monthly, as well as we have online content that I run. So we have a membership exclusive content page that has all of our um, previous newsletters, all the recipes that we're, we have done in our nutrition classes and recorded nutrition classes, as well as exercises and things like that. We have a private community pa page for all of you who are not local to kind of bring us all together together and give us that sense of community, which is so important. And, um, and then you work with me. And then if you're a level two, you get a little piece of both pies. You get my mom and myself. Um, so you have physician um, uh, assistance as well as dietitian assistance along your health and wellness journey, in addition to those online components to our practice. So, yes. I want to work with the diva. How can I work with her? She's, I don't know. I do. She sounds amazing. <laughs> she is amazing. She is my hero. She's wonderful. No, if we could all work with the diva, she was great. That is so cool. Um, so Alina also says, are you familiar with working with people with UC? I think that's ulcerative colitis. Yes, yes, we have worked with a variety of digestive um, disorders and helping those um, relieve symptoms and find a nutrient dense diet that works for them. Absolutely, awesome. absolutely. That, that's become a bigger topic even uh, within health and the plant-based world and gut health. It's one of my passions, so absolutely. That's great. Well, you're wonderful and you're, you look amazing. And I mean, oh, you, you barely you. look like you're out of college. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you should, you should, uh, I don't know if you're, if you have a social media following and you'd like anyone to follow you, but I think when you give your kid the smash cake, people would love to see that. Absolutely. Yeah. You can find me. Um, I had a blog prior to baby and moving and everything that I have full time with my mom and baby has kind of dwindled, but I still do things on my social media. So I am, I can be found at naturally.rooted.nutrition. 
So uh, that that is me, and uh, you'll you'll find me there. You'll see a lot of uh, baby, husband, food, working out. We have two rescue pets, uh, Buckwheat and Hoss. Um, so uh, they they're all on there too. So we get a little piece of everything, but we'll definitely be showing the smash cake. Absolutely, that's great. I'll put that in the show notes because I want to see a kid do it with a healthy cake for a change. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you know, I, one thing I, you you said when you met your husband, he was in the football, and you were yes. a runner. So what do you guys do now for exercise now that you have a kid? Like kind of run with him in the baby carriage. Yes, I am a, a big jogger stroller. I've known in our neighborhood as the crazy lady. So our German Shepherd is um, 90 pounds and he's lean 90. He's a big boy. And I take him and Caleb and off we go in the morning. So we are um, out there running. I just signed up for my first longer distance race, a half in the fall. I'm very excited about it. I had some postpartum um, issues, had to work through, but I'm back at it. I'm making my comeback. And so I'll do that as well as strength train. So running is my happy place. I can kind of shut my mind off. And that's what I tell people with exercise, find something you enjoy. I know not everyone's going to love running. Um, I, I, there was a time in high school where I totally despised that I was basketball originally, but uh, find something you love and that's my happy place. But I know the strength training is so essential for bone density, bone health, uh, functional fitness as well. And I've grown to love it uh, through college athletics. So I don't, I don't get to get, get out on the water anymore and row, but I am happy to run and share that love of running with my mom. So it's something we get to do together. Um, and then Nathan, um, he is in still you know, heavy and obviously as a strength and conditioning coach, um, it's his job, but it's also his passion. So big into power lifting, um, still uh, hasn't been able to compete since moving here, but did that a little bit when we were in Atlanta. Um, but that, that's his first uh, love or second love football is his first, I would say, and then, and then uh, power lifting. So that's what his uh, focus is. But we do have, we have a rower in the garage. We'll both hop on that as well for some circuits um, and, you know, metabolic things. Uh, but he'll do a little running with us, but he's more of the strength guy. I'm more the cardio girl in the relationship. And it's funny. I'm more the yoga girl. I don't like either of those. I don't know how anyone enjoys running. I just don't get it. But I know your mom is a real runner. Yes, yes. So, um, but yoga is fabulous. Like I said, we do yoga. Um, we have um, someone come and instruct yoga in our office every Wednesday for, you know, a group of women in our practice who are interested. And we have several instructors who are members, um, but then a lot of people who just practice on a regular basis and absolutely love it. So I'm, I'm a big advocate. Good. That's great that your husband found a place where his passion and his profession could intersect. That's true bliss in life, I think. Yes, absolutely. No, it is really, it's been very nice to see how it all worked out. So yeah, it is working out. We're still, we're still trucking, right? So <laughs> that is great. Well, thank you so much for being plant-based and helping other people adopt a very healthy version of the plant-based diet. Oh, well, thank you for having me and for, for the show that you and the reach you would do with the show for promoting it. I think it's fabulous. And, you know, I always tell people, I, uh, I want people to, have a healthy family like we do, you know, and we're so fortunate to do that. And we've, you know, ever since my mom's been in private practice, our, our motto has been treat our patients as we want our family to be treated. And that's going the same way with nutrition. And that's what we try to incorporate with our, our practice and with the reach we get outside of it. So thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. And next up is grandma. And then when Caleb's old enough, <laughs> oh, come on. Absolutely. When we get a few words out there, a few more teeth, you know, that was funny about, I never thought about leafy greens and old people too, probably it'd be good for them to blend them as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, it was, it was a little tricky. Cause you know, I'm thinking about, you know, oh my gosh, greens, how am I going to get those in? I mean, he does like broccoli, but I was like, okay, we got to get a little variety, but yeah, blend them and you're good. <laughs> That's great. Cause I, I was interviewing a food addiction specialist recently. And she said, one of the biggest problems is that there some kids just never eat vegetables from ever as an adult, because they never were given them when they were little. And that it's right. really important to give kids vegetables, maybe even more so than fruit, just because if they don't develop that taste early, that it's really hard to develop it later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely try to balance out the flavors. So not just all only sweet, you know, with fruit, like I said, we, we're not doing any sugar, but um, wanted to have a nice balance there. So some meals, they may, it may not even be present. I mean, I never want him to fear fruit, but I do think that you have to have 
a balance with everything in life. Um, so no, definitely trying to expose them to as much as possible. Nice. Great. Well, thanks so much, Addy. It was great uh, getting to chat with you today. Well, thank you for having me and you have a, a lovely, lovely day. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when I get to introduce you to somebody that's probably going to be new to you. He is not only a pediatrician, but he's a lifestyle medicine doctor, which is a very new specialty. And I'm so excited when I get lifestyle medicine doctors on the show. And his name is Dr. David Bowman. So I hope you'll come back tomorrow. Thanks, Addie. And don't forget, I really want grandma on the show. You've got it. I'll have to contact the diva. I'll have her people talk to your people. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, divas people talk to my people. Great. Yeah. Take care.